A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and led me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many there were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, See, I will bring spirit into you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, make flesh grow over you, cover your skin, and put spirit in you, so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the Spirit, prophesy, son of man, and say to the Spirit, Thus says the Lord God, From the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is... Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Those whom he has redeemed from the hand of the foe and gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They went astray in the desert wilderness, the way to an inhabited city they did not find. Hungry and thirsty, their life was wasting away within them. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits he rescued them, and he led them by a direct way to reach an inhabited city. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wondrous deeds to the children of men because he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with good things. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. Ezekiel is in a plain filled with bones. Now what is this plain? One of the religions in the Middle East at this time was called Zoroaster. It was practiced especially in Persia. 
And Ezekiel is in exile in Babylon, which is right next door to Persia. The Zoroastrians didn't cremate their dead. They didn't bury them. They left them in a plain for the birds to pick clean with the idea that they would be raised up on the last day. Obviously, Ezekiel is in a type of Zoroastrian cemetery and he's told to preach to the bones, to give them spirit, because without that spirit, they're not living. What is the significance of this passage? At one level, it's referring to the resurrection of the people of Israel. Notice how many skeletons there are. They are as good as dead. They're living in exile, but they'll be raised up again. But I doubt that Ezekiel would have used this example if he didn't believe in the individual resurrection of the dead, that the dead would one day rise from the grave. Around this time, we do see some evidence of people believing in the resurrection of the dead in the book of Job, in Psalm 49 and 72, in Isaiah chapter 26. So it's very possible that Ezekiel is also talking about our individual resurrection. The Gospel is from Matthew 22, 34 to 40. One of the scribes asked Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? His response, you shall love the Lord with your heart, your soul, and your mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself. If we love God, if we love our neighbor, then everything else that's contained in the commandments will be done. And may God bless us.